think I hear the killer birds in the attic. I better go check it out. Hi, I'm Bobby, and I went on vacation recently. I went ziplining, I went on a crazy ride, but the scariest thing I did was going to a bird preserve. There was tons of them. I was completely surrounded. They were all chirping at once, and it was absolutely like being in the movie The Birds. So I thought it was time to take a look at this uniquely haunting Alfred Hitchcock classic. Oh, one more thing. About the opening, I would have used real birds, but the budget for this show is cheap, cheap, In 1960, Alfred Hitchcock terrified audiences with Psycho, but now they expected him to top it, and the search was on for a new story, and he found the novella The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. Du Maurier had previously written Rebecca, which was Hitchcock's first American film. The story focused on flocks of birds that start attacking a family in a farmhouse. It had already been adapted to radio twice, and it had been done once on television for the dramatic anthology series Danger. And Alfred Hitchcock wanted to use it for his TV series, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. But then he started reading newspaper stories about real bird attacks, and it convinced him that the idea was realistic enough for a movie. One incident in particular occurred in 1961 in Capitola, California where flocks of birds flung themselves on the people's houses and cars, and in the morning, the streets were covered in dead birds. Years later, it was discovered that domoic acid from the algae caused their disorientation, but at the time, it was an unexplained attack. Some of the shots would be done with traveling mat shots, or blue screen, where the birds and the people were filmed separately, and then the film was put together. Other shots were done with the live birds on the set with the actors. Some were friendly, like Buddy the Raven, and others not so much, like Archie the Raven, who would bite Rod Taylor every day. They had bird trainers there, and to get the birds to attack, they would put meat by the camera so the birds would attack the lens. They would tie the birds to the kid's collar so it looked like they're being chased. They would put bird seed in kid's hair so the birds would go for it and sometimes they would just fling the birds at the actors. They would wire the bird's mouth shut so no one would really get bit, but still, it was enough to ruffle anyone's feathers. The wealthy and wild socialite Miss Melanie Daniels meets the straight-laced lawyer Mitch Brenner at a bird shop. Mitch plays a practical joke on Melanie and claims he's buying lovebirds for his little sister's birthday. Melanie decides to play a joke on him, buys two lovebirds, and drives out to Bodega Bay to deliver them. Mitch and Melanie are obviously attracted to each other, but Mitch's mother, Lydia, doesn't approve. However, things are about to get even more awkward when the birds start attacking people. Melanie is the first one to be attacked when a seagull swoops down and pecks her head. It's strange, but aside from a little blood, harmless. But soon, the birds start attacking in greater and greater numbers, and cause greater and greater damage. After you watch this movie, you will never look at a bird the same way again. They are terrifying! Part of it is how they film the bird attacks, but also because they always make it seem possible. Bird attacks can happen. And almost anywhere you go, you're going to see large flocks of birds. So the idea alone is easily conceivable, which immediately makes it scarier. Also, it takes almost an hour to get to the bird attacks, with little warning signs here and there like when they say the chickens have stopped eating. Now some people complain about this, but I like this approach. Because it doesn't feel like a horror movie where there's a murder every five minutes. No, it feels like the real world. And indeed, 
real freak incidents or natural disasters do have little warning signs. So that when we finally do get to the bird attacks, they seem more real, and as a result, more threatening. And speaking of the bird attacks, once they happen, they happen all the time, and they are so well done. There's huge masses of them, and I especially like the close-ups of them biting and pecking people. But Hitchcock, being the master of suspense, makes the anticipation of the bird attacks just as frightening as the attacks themselves. They don't use any traditional music. It's all bird sounds, and just hearing them is horrifying. And... You always see these big mobs of them, just sitting, looking, and waiting. The best example of this is when Melanie is waiting at the school to pick up Mitch's little sister. The cheese took legs and ran away. Rustle to tea, rustle to tea. Hey, Danny, that's all the nickety nackety retro quality. Will it be will it be now, now, now? She combed the hair but once a year. Rustle to tea, rustle to tea. I'm on the edge of my seat every time I watch it. And again, Hitchcock always keeps it possible. He doesn't give a definite explanation of why the birds are doing this, because they thought that would have been too science fiction-y. Instead, they have a scene at the diner where different characters are theorizing why the birds might be doing this. You seem to be implying that the birds are starting a war against humanity. Uh, they could have been after the seagulls, like you said. It's the end of the world. Also, at times it seems like the birds are thinking of strategies on how to kill people. But they don't definitely say, yes they are thinking, because that would seem ridiculous. Instead, they just put the possibility out there. And that what if the birds are thinking, what if this really is the end of the world, is what makes it so eerie. However, it wouldn't be anywhere near as eerie if we didn't care about the characters. The stars of the movie are the birds, but for the characters without feathers, Hitch sticks to those Hitchcock archetypes that appear in so many of his movies. There's the suave leading man, the smart little girl, the domineering mother, and the main one is Tippi Hedrick as the cool blonde, the daughter to a wealthy newspaper mogul, the wild Melanie Daniels. Melanie is a funny, practical joker with a party girl past. Well, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I work at the Traveler's Aid at the airport. Helping travelers? No, misdirecting them. I thought you could read my character. But now she's looking for some purpose in her life. When she was younger, her mother ran off with some hotel man. And you can kind of see her doing the same thing, because she's so flighty. I made another pun. Because she loves Mitch, but she's always going, should I stay or should I go? But then when the attacks start happening, she tells her father on the phone, I can't leave now, Daddy, because this family needs her. So she actually grows as a character, finds a purpose, and becomes someone that people could depend on. Tippy is incredibly charismatic. You can't help but like her. But she did have some trouble during the movie. Early on in production, she was promised that during the scene where she gets attacked by birds in the attic, that they were going to use mechanical birds. But when she got to the studio, the assistant director went into her dressing room and said, Um, Trippy, there was a problem with the mechanical birds and we're using real ones. Bye. And left. And then when she got to the set, she saw that there was already a cage built around the set. So there was never any intention of using mechanical birds. And for five days, they flung birds at her. During the final few minutes, you may notice you don't always get a good look at Melanie's face. And that's because Tippy was in the hospital with exhaustion, and they had to use a double for some of the shots. After Melanie, I think the most fascinating character is Lydia Brenner, Mitch's mother, is played by Jessica Tandy. Lydia is distant and aloof and disapproves of any woman that Mitch is attracted to, and has ruined his past relationships. Hitchcock is famous for his mothers dominating their sons. Think of Mrs. Bates in Psycho. But because this is a more realistic movie, he takes a more realistic approach. It's explained that four years ago, her husband died, 
which is why she's afraid of being abandoned. And there's a scene where she figuratively and literally lets her hair down with Melanie. Jessica Tandy brings so much depth to her performance. I just love looking at the emotion in her face. Along with the cast passing with flying colors, so does the film's unique tone. The opening scenes with the bird shop feel like a screwball comedy, which was a type of silly romantic comedy from the 1930s. And there are these humorous little side characters. Then, we get into Bodega Bay, and we meet Annie Hayworth and Lydia, and it becomes like a soap opera, with all the complex relationships and emotions. Then the birds start attacking, and it becomes a horror movie. The bird attacks get progressively more violent, and like a good horror movie, part of the fun is watching them kill people. Don't look at me like I'm a cuckoo. But after they attack the diner, Mitch and Melanie are walking down the abandoned street, and they find the dead body of Annie, and it transforms from a horror movie to an apocalypse movie. We think back to what was said earlier at the diner. I have never known birds of different species to flock together. The very concept is unimaginable. Why, if that happened, we wouldn't stand a chance. How would we possibly hope to fight them? We hear some radio reports of other bird attacks in nearby areas. And then there's that last shot of the movie with countless numbers of birds. And you think, we are doomed. These transitions of tone occur seamlessly. And because everything has been so realistic, and because we had such a carefree start, a fun day at the bird shop, these images of a bird apocalypse are incredibly believable and incredibly frightening. The Birds was a hit and became one of Hitchcock's most famous movies. There was a TV movie sequel, an attraction at Universal Studios, and even a birds-themed restaurant in Bodega Bay, where it was set and partially filmed. Tippi Hendren and Alfred Hitchcock would make one more movie together, Marnie. But in recent years, Tippi has alleged that Hitchcock became obsessed with her and sexually harassed her. Tippi was under contract to Hitchcock, and she said that he tried to ruin her career by not letting her take other job offers. Some film historians have gone to Hitch's defense, and the events were dramatized in the 2012 TV movie, The Girl. Some people complain that it takes too long to get into it, but if you have a little patience, you'll find this to be one of the most disturbing, creepiest, and most realistic horror film you'll ever run into. So I give it four feathered friends out of four. Thank you for watching Dusty Girl Movies and enjoy the end of the world.